when lockdown was first announced back in March, were you a teeny bit excited? I know that sounds insane, but the child in me felt a thrill. Well, I was excited about battening down the hatches, stocking up on tin goods. I thought it would be like the spirit of the Blitz 2020 style. And although I wasn't one of those toilet roll hoarding maniacs, I dutifully stayed safe, stayed at home with the family and made the best of it. Amongst the anxiety, job losses and rising death toll, I put my blinkers on and I put the lockdown plans into action. Pretty soon came the lockdown life goals. One patronising obligation and guilt trip after the other. Think of this time as a gift. Time for you to do all the things you've wanted to do but never had the time. After all, Shakespeare wrote King Lear while quarantined for the plague. So what's your excuse? Read War and Peace. Start writing that novel you've wittered on about doing for the past decade. Get killer abs. Take up the tuba. Find out why everyone's talking about Pilates. Parlez-vous français? Mais oui. But I'm thinking of taking up another Duolingo course, seeing as this one's going so well. I, I really do think of this time as a gift. When have I ever had the time like this to dedicate to my children? Hmm. Normally it's yeah, in a minute. My mummy has got things to do. No, I, I have to do some work. I've got no in a minute. I've got to the dishwasher. I it, oh yes, darling. Okay, yeah, in a minute. In, in a minute. Well, super nanny, eat your heart out. <laughs> I'm running a tight ship. The learning schedule gleams up on the wall as I'm dishing out worksheets smugly, thinking I could and should have been a school teacher. Easy peasy. Banana bread, anyone? Just posting another pic on Facebook of my latest Bake Off triumph. And despite the lack of visitors, my house is spotless. I'm going to marry Kundo and Mrs Hinch the fuck out of my bedroom. Pretty soon, the tears and the tantrums set in as the relentless monotony of Groundhog Day grinds on. Kids got a bit upset too. My smug resolve of, hey, lockdown is a great time to reduce and give up drinking starts to wane and I'm reaching for the gin earlier and earlier in the day. And my December mantra of, oh, go on, it's Christmas, that permits me to eat chocolate oranges and drink Baileys for breakfast throughout the month, becomes an adapted mantra of, oh, go on, it's lockdown, that justifies my rise in alcoholism, just eat takeaways and nachos for breakfast. My house, now resembles one of those horrors from Britain's Worst Hoarders. Room dividers are made up of a discarded Amazon and Domino's pizza boxes. Reality is setting in that this madness isn't going to end. My cheerful, positive Mental attitude is waning as I pace backwards and forwards like Lady Macbeth, feeling the elephant skin on my hands from the ritual obsessional cleaning. Happy birthday, ringing in my head as the alcohol gel removes yet another layer of epidermis. In the early days of lockdown, a trip to the supermarket was a terrifying apocalyptic affair, wasn't it? Gloves on, mask on, head down, security guards, tumbleweed, arrows, cues. The eerie solitude and an underlying panic of empty shelves. 
And had you heard of Zoom pre-COVID? Me neither. But now I can't call my friends, family or colleagues without it. Do you remember those inaugural Zoom calls? Hmm. Miss Storm, we're ready for you in hair and makeup. Well, a primp and a, a pamper later and well, I was ready for my close up. Now it's whatever half-assed, half-dressed state I'm in that the lucky viewer gets. And it doesn't matter how many times you and your group have Zoomed, there are the undeniable Zoom truths that take place. One of you is always going to come online waving and talking while the rest of you are going, you're on mute, take it off mute. Frantic gesticulating, miming and, and, and online messages later and now Carol is fully verbal. There's always a point at which you think one of you has got a frozen screen but then you later realise that the person's just very still and really really bored. It's usually when I've been talking for some time. And then of course the classic Zoom goodbye. Uh, at, at, at what point do I um, interrupt the conversation to say that I need to go and the time delay makes it all the more difficult and everyone misses your declaration to leave. But when you finally do take the plunge to go, it's the embarrassing 10 minutes of, of apologetic panic glances up in the screen as, as you're frantically trying to exit the meeting. I swear my kids are going to grow up with a a fear of intimacy and a germ phobia. Poor things can't go anywhere without me shouting two metres at them if they dare come remotely close to another human being. And I'm stood outside that bathroom door like a sergeant major, questioning their hygiene routine and demanding a sniff inspection of their hands. The pressure, obligation, Comparison, fear, and judgment has made this isolation all the more isolating. If you have learnt Japanese and how to play the lute during this time, well, well done you, genuinely. I mean, if you have maintained a fitness regime and you're ready to unleash that beach body onto the world, well, then here is a pat on the back for you. Seriously. But if, like me, rather than being inspired or accomplished, you've stayed at home, stayed safe, and given your mind and body the self-care that it needs in whatever form it takes, then I salute you. If your waistband has increased and your Amazon purchases have got out of control, your food intake is up and your exercise resolve is down, and that's okay. We are all surviving in our own little way. If you are here with the rest of us, in whatever shape or state, then you are the spirit of the Blitz. We're all in it together. No goals or achievements. Just getting to the end of each day is a win.